Hello everyone, in this video I will show how to configure Cisco Router as a DHCP server to dynamically assign IP addresses to DHCP client. DHCP protocol follows the client-server paradigm, where you have a DHCP client in one side, DHCP server in the other side. A DHCP client is going to request network parameters from the DHCP server and DHCP server will provide the network parameters to a DHCP client. When we talk about network parameters, it includes not only IP address, but also subnet mask, default gateway, IP address of DNS server, IP address of Wins server, domain name, uh, IP address of time server, etc. This is related to DHCP protocol. Of course, previously we can say that we can also assign an IP address statically. We can assign a static IP address to a computer through manual intervention. Go to a computer, open the uh, machine the, uh, through the administrator account and assign an IP address manually and that IP address will be static. It will stay there and if you want to change it you have to go to the computer and make a change there. DHCP here you are centralizing everything on the DHCP server. So if you want to make a change on the network address or subnet address or subnet mask or the default gateway no need to visit every computer on the network you just go to the DHCP server make the change and the change will propagate to all the DHCP clients so in this scenario here we have two LANs and these two LANs are directly connected to a router so fast Ethernet 00 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 now in the first part of this scenario I will show you how to how to configure router RT1 as a DHCP server to provide IP addresses to the host in the two networks. So the first thing, let's open router RT1 and see what is inside. First, I'm going to show the running configuration. Now, running configuration shows that IP addresses are assigned to uh, the interface, the router interfaces. We have two interfaces here connected to LANs, FASTETN00 and FASTETN0 slash 1. Note the network address that we are using, or the subnet address, because we are subnetting a class B network address, 172.16.0 and 172.31.0. Also, an IP address is assigned to serial interface 0 slash 0. And we are using routing protocol, SPF, to route between the different routers in this diagram. Now, the first thing what I will do here is to start building my DHCP configuration. So I'm going to specify a pool of IP addresses that will be assigned dynamically to hosts on the, on the first LAN. So 172.16.0.100. So this will be the starting IP address. And then um, first I need to specify the pool. Let's say 172.16.0.100. 0 dash pool right this is the name of the pool and inside this pool I'm going to specify the remaining parameters for example the default router what is the default router it should be 172.16.0.254 the network uh, will be using the IP address from 172.16.0.254 with a subnet mask 255.255.255.0 this is a subnet mask and we can always include the DNS server and option etc bear in mind that Cisco Packet Tracer is just a simple simulator of Cisco routers and switch in real routers and switches you will have more than that many options will be included so I built my, the, my DHCP pool for the first LAN now I'm going to build the DHCP pool for the second LAN. Now in this case I'm going to call it 172.31.0 pool. Uh, inside this pool I will specify the default router which is 172.31.0.254. Network will be 172.31.0.0 and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Uh, we can we can see 
the other options which are available under this command, but as I said previously, it's very really limited using Cisco Packet Tracer. Now I am done. I go back to the uh, configuration, show RAM. So these are the DHCP pool of IP addresses that I configured in the router. Now let's see what happened. I go to host one, desktop, IP configuration, and then I configure my computer, host one, as a DHCP client by clicking on this radio button. Now it's requesting IP address from the DHCP uh, server, which is configured on the Cisco router, and he obtained the IP address 172.16.0.1 with a subnet mask and the default gateway as configured. Uh, let's see also with the second host what happens. I go to the desktop, IP configuration, and uh, choose DHCP. So it's going to request network parameters from the DHCP server. The same thing happens with host 3. Same thing, I configure host 3 as a DHCP client. So it obtains also IP address in the following the same subnet address 172.31.0. And finally, host 4 will be configured as a DHCP client requesting its IP address from the DHCP server. And in fact, it obtains IP address 172.31.0.2 in addition to the subnet mask and the default gateway. Now let's check if, this, if there is connectivity and reachability between all hosts. So I'm going to ping the host 3 on the second LAN, 172.31.0.1, does it work? Yes. Now let's see if we can reach host on segment 172.16.0. I start pinging host 1 and then uh, we should see a timeout and then reply. Okay, it takes some time to get reply and then let's ping to host 2 in the first LAN. Same thing, it will timeout and then provide a reply because it takes some time to get a reply. Right, so everything is fine. The four computers on the two lands have obtained their IP address from the DHCP server. Let's go to RT1 router and look at the DHCP table. Show IP DHCP binding. So here, in this table, it shows that this IP address was assigned to host with this MAC address. This IP address was assigned to host with this MAC address. So the first table refers to IP addresses assigned to DHCP clients, and the second table refers to MAC addresses of the hosts which requested those IP address. Here it shows that the, the type of assignment is automatic. It means that uh, the uh, assignment is not static. If, for example, host one will, will disconnect or will shut down and another host will come and request an IP address from the DHCP server, most likely the second host will get the same network parameters as the one assigned to host one previously. So this kind of entries are dynamic in the sense that every assigned IP address might be reassigned to another host provided the host to which it has been assigned first uh, is not available. Uh, there is a way of, uh, actually to assign a static DHCP entry or a static DHCP uh, IP address in, uh, to different hosts but this will be the topic of another, uh, of another presentation. Uh, now from each host, we'll try to see if it's possible to communicate with the web server using the uh, assigned IP address. So let me just put the IP address of the web server, 10.1.1.100. Yeah, it works fine. And then I try from host 4 and see if I can communicate with the web server. So I put the IP address 10.1.1.100. There is another thing that we can point to, for example, in router RT1, uh, we can always, we can configure, let's say, a range of single or a range of IP addresses that will not be included in the dynamic assignment by the DHCP server. For example, which address would be excluded from being dynamically assigned by the DHCP server. So here you can specify your IP addresses. For example, you can start with the IP address of the default gateway, which is 172.16.0.254. Okay, this is the default gateway. So it should not be included in the dynamic assignment process. 
and we'll do the same thing with the default gateway of the second line, 31. So, except these two IP addresses, all the IP addresses that are included in this range from 172.16.0.1 up to 172.16.0.254, all these IP addresses will be assigned dynamically to any DHCP client of the same LAN, except the one that we specified here, 172.16.0.254, in order to avoid creating a conflict. And the same applies with the second LAN. But today, of course, today uh, this issue is not of big importance actually, because routers, because what happens? Routers are provided, uh, can always check whether my IP address is already assigned or not by pinging the IP address before it assigns it to a DHCP client. So it sends by default Cisco router will ping three times to the IP address before the same IP address is assigned to the DHCP client. If there is a reply, it means the IP address is in use. The DHCP server will try to allocate another IP address for dynamic assignment. If there is no reply, it means the IP address is not used, which means that uh, the DHCP server can assign it to the DHCP client. But what about if a DHCP client is configured with a firewall? The firewall will prevent the client, the DHCP client, from replying to a ping, even if the ping is generated by a DHCP server. So in that case, it will be a good practice to include this command, IP DHCP excluded address, in order to make sure that that IP address will not be part of the pool of IP addresses to be dynamically assigned to the ATP client. This is Hakim Adish. Thanks for viewing this presentation. Bye.